In problem number 32 of section 4.2, uh, we're asked to find the momentum of, a mo of an object of mass m that's moving along the x-axis with a certain acceleration, assuming that some force is acting on this object. Now, momentum is equal to um, mass times velocity, which uh, is also equal to the antiderivative of mass times uh, acceleration, assuming that we just have a constant mass, if we're assuming that acceleration and velocity are both functions of t. But if you recall, force is equal to uh, ma, mass times acceleration. This is actually just equal to um, integral, or excuse me, the antiderivative of force uh, with respect to t. So in order to find the momentum, let's uh, look at, here we're assuming that we have a 10 kilogram mass. So this is going to be 10 times the antiderivative of the acceleration, which is sine of 2t dt. And now to evaluate the antiderivative here, uh, we could use the um, the chain or the excuse me the u substitution, but it's actually going to be a little bit um, a, a little long here. We can do this a little quicker way. So I'll show you a little bit of a shortcut that'll work uh, when you have linear uh, compositions of a linear function with another function. So here we have you know two t, and if we were just to kind of naively approach this, we might think that this is uh, negative cosine. 2t plus c. But this isn't quite right because if we take the derivative here, we want to make we want the derivative of this to equal this. Or to equal, excuse me, the derivative of this piece here to equal the argument um, of the antiderivative up here. So if we take the ant take the derivative here, we end up with all right, positive sine 2t. Now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2t. Uh, so we'd end up with an extra uh, 2 on the outside. But we don't want that 2 there, but we co so we can compensate, that, compensate for that by putting in a 1 half. So now if we take the derivative here, we end up with um, well, negative, negative 1 half sine of 2t times 2t. The 2 and the 1 half will cancel out, and we're left with 10 times uh, or we're left with, you know, sine of 2t. So how I explained it was a little long, but you can remember that each, anytime you see uh, a linear argument inside here, rather than going through a u substitution, you can just divide by um, divide by the coefficient 2, or divide by whatever your coefficient is there. So we continue to simplify this now. We end up with negative 5 cosine 2t plus c. And we're given an initial value here that um, at time t equals 0, the momentum is 20 kilogram meters per second. So let's evaluate this t equals 0. And this will be, well, cosine of 0 is just 1. So we'll have 5 times 1, or just 5, plus c. Now we're given that, of course, p of 0 now is equal to 5 plus c, but it's also equal to 20. That means that uh, c is going to be equal to 15. Sure, I did my arithmetic right here. That's something looked up here. Here we have a minus sign, so this should be minus five plus c. Same here. This is actually c equals uh, twenty-five, not not fifteen. Sorry about that. All right, now we have um, our value of c, so we can write the full equation for momentum. So momentum is going to equal uh, where are we here? Negative 5 times uh, 
cosine of 2t plus cosine plus 25. All right. Now, uh, part B asks us to evaluate the momentum when um, time equals 4. So the momentum at t equals 4 is going to be equal to minus 5 times cosine of 8 plus 25. And if you work all this out, it turns out that this is um, approximately equal to, I believe, 27.7 or so. Not sure about that. You have to check. But that is um, the answer for the momentum at time equals 4.